look, my daughter, at my heart, surrounded with thorns, with which ungrateful men pierce me at every moment by their blasphemies and ingratitude. You, at least, try to console me, and announce in my name that I promise to assist at the hour of death with all the graces necessary for salvation, all those who, on the first Saturdays of five consecutive months, confess, receive Holy Communion, recite the Rosary, and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary with the intention of making reparation to me. Would you like to learn how to keep Our Lady company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary? Today I'm going to begin teaching you how to do so. Meditation can sound like something extraordinarily difficult, something that you could only do if you had great powers of mental concentration. But in fact, it is quite doable for anyone, no matter how weak or how sinful you might feel. But many people have never been taught how to practice meditative prayer. And so we'll be taking you through each one of the 15 decades of the Rosary for each of the next 15 months. On the first Saturday of the month, I'll lead you through a 15-minute meditation on one of the mysteries. But before doing that, I'll give you today some simple steps that you can use not only for the first Saturdays, but for any other time of quiet prayer, such as a holy hour. These seven steps are drawn from one of the oldest and deepest traditions of prayer in the Church, the practice of Lectio Divina, which is Latin for the divine reading. It refers to a classic Benedictine practice of reading sacred scripture in a prayerful manner so that God can act powerfully in your soul as you read and meditate on His Word. We won't be going through all seven steps in each one of our first Saturday meditations, but today I will teach you briefly about all seven of them in case they are helpful for other areas of your spiritual life. To help you remember these seven steps, I'll link each of them to seven things that happened when Our Lady appeared to St. Bernadette at Lourdes. The first step is called statio, which involves slowing down pausing to become aware of the Lord's presence, asking for the help of the Holy Ghost. Think of St. Bernadette on the first day Our Lady appeared to her in the Grotto of Lourdes. She was struck by the presence of this beautiful lady. Awestruck, she took out her rosary and fell to her knees. In Statio, we pause everything else we were doing and turn toward the living presence of Our Lady, the living presence of our Lord, and simply become aware of their presence and ask for the help of the Holy Ghost for the time of meditation we are about to begin. The second and third steps are called Lexio and Meditatio, and we're going to look at them together. For these two steps, think of when Our Lady asked St. Bernadette to dig in the ground with her hands and then of the miraculous spring that began to bubble forth from where she had dug. Lectio is the work of digging in the ground. It involves working with our minds. As Pope Benedict described it, Lectio consists in pouring over a biblical text for some time, reading it and rereading it, as it were ruminating on it, as the fathers say, and squeezing from it, so to speak, all its juice so that it may nourish meditation and contemplation and like water succeed in irrigating life itself. One way of doing Lectio, of digging into the Word of God, is to ask who, what, when, where. Who is in this passage? What are they doing? What is happening? What teaching is Jesus giving? When is it happening? other circumstances. If Lectio is our work, us working with our minds, then Meditatio is the work of God, the miraculous spring coming forth from the ground. It involves listening quietly in the presence of God to what He may wish to say to you, to what He might want to call your attention to in this passage. 
Here we need to have a listening heart and patience to hear what God may wish to say in this passage to me or about my life. The divine action of God often takes place in a quiet, hidden way, so deep within the soul that the soul is not even aware of it at the time. And even when the soul perceives God's action, this often happens in a very ordinary way. For example, I know a student who while in college began to read the Gospels in a prayerful manner with a listening heart. One day he was reading the story of the naming of John the Baptist, where all the family and friends gathered for the occasion were urging his father Zechariah and his mother Elizabeth to name him after Zechariah, or at least after someone in the family, but not to call him John because no one in their family had that name. This young man had heard that gospel story many times, but on this day, as he was reading it prayerfully and with a listening heart, the thought came to him. Zechariah was willing to do what God wanted, even when it was unpopular, by naming his son John when all of his family and friends wanted otherwise. I also should be willing to do what God wants me to do, even when it is unpopular among my fellow students and friends. And in this way, God began speaking to the young man's heart. The fourth step is conversatio, conversation with God, speaking to him and listening to him. At Lourdes, there were times when St. Bernadette conversed with Our Lady, for example, asking her her name, and Our Lady eventually replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. While prayerfully reading scripture, there are all sorts of conversations that you might begin with our Lord. For example, the young man I mentioned might have begun a conversation with God like this. Lord, in what ways should I be willing to be different from those around me in order to be faithful to you? In my daily life, what do you want me to do? A fifth step is contemplatio, the quiet contemplation of God, simply stopping and adoring his presence and gradually, usually imperceptibly, being formed with the mind of Christ, gradually receiving from God his own way of seeing and judging reality. For this step, think of the many moments during the apparitions at Lourdes when there was no conversation between St. Bernadette and Our Lady, but where she was in ecstasy, on her knees, looking at Our Lady and praying. The next step is axio, putting our faith into action, making our lives a gift for others in charity. After asking God, what do you want me to do? We then try to put that into action. Think of St. Bernadette leaving the grotto and going back into the town to convey to the priest the message Our Lady had asked of her. And think of how the visions of Our Lady must have impacted Bernadette's daily life when she was now called to be patient over and over again with inquisitive pilgrims. The seventh and last step is thanksgiving. Before finishing our time of Lectio Divina or of meditation, we should pause to thank God for all that he has done in our souls during this time of meditation, even if we have not perceived anything during that time of prayer, because most of the time that will be the case. God usually acts so deeply within the soul that the soul does not perceive his action at the time. Here, think of St. Bernadette going into the parish church to pray, to give thanks to God for the amazing gift of having been in the presence of Our Lady. So now you know the seven steps of Lectio Divina, of meditative prayer. And if you think of these seven moments in the life of St. Bernadette, you'd be able to remember all seven steps of meditation. In a given time of prayer, we may not use all of them, nor are they steps which need to always be followed in this order. Think of them rather as helpful tools that are meant to assist you in spending a time of prayer face to face with God, with a listening heart, so that He can act in your soul. As you'll see in our first Saturday meditations, on a given Saturday, 
I might only use a small number of these tools, but I wanted you to have the full set of seven at your disposal so that they can assist you also in other times of prayer. I'll look forward to seeing you as we begin this series of First Saturdays.